Hello traders and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about my personal trading plan and talking about ways that you can create your own trading plan to be more consistent and more disciplined in your trading. I'm going to share my own trading plan start to finish. Let's go ahead and get into the video right now. So hello traders and welcome back everybody to the channel. My name is Nick, I'm a YouTuber, I'm a trader and I'm an entrepreneur here on YouTube. I share a lot of Forex analysis, I share all sorts of Forex trade, uh, trading strategies and ideas for you to implement potentially in your own trading. And today I've got a tip or kind of a little lesson uh, on trading plans that I wanted to share with you guys. And I'm gonna be sharing my own trading plan. You can see I've got it pulled up, Nick's trading plan here. This is kind of all the details and all the components that make up the strategy that I trade. Um, I have a couple different trading strategies and this is one of my trading plans. But for the most part, we're gonna see some pretty consistent aspects along um, the different trading plans that I do have. But the goal for today's video is to share my trading plan and to maybe give you some ideas on how you can build your own and how you can kind of create a trading plan that will help you be consistent and help you be disciplined in the markets. So let's go ahead and jump right into this thing. You can see it's Nick's trading plan here and this is mostly for my swing trading um, kind of strategy that I use and I'm going to be sharing all the different pieces with you guys step by step. Time frames is the first one. Mostly on my swing trading, I'm looking for the daily chart and the four hour chart, and sometimes I'll even look at the one hour for confirmation. And again, in our trading details uh, or trading plan, we wanna be as detailed as we possibly can with what we're actually gonna be doing. If you outline what you're gonna be doing before you get into it, the old saying is plan your trade, trade your plan. And in this case, we're gonna have a plan right here for us to look at and for us to reference when we're actually in the markets. This will help you when you get kind of confused and you get stuck in your trading to actually stick to the status quo or stick to what you're supposed to be doing. So time frames, uh, daily, four hour, and the one hour, right? Indicators, mostly for my trading, I'm gonna be using price action, and sometimes I'll look at the RSI for some sort of confirmation, as well as Fibonacci retracements, and heavily support and resistance zones. That's just my personal preference. But again, this trading strategy is not for you to just blindly copy, it's for you to get an idea of how you can create your own. On top of those things, I also use the currency strength meter, which is a tool that I built uh, personally. I'm a software developer by kind of trade, and I build tools for myself as well as other traders. You can find more information on that in the description down below. There's a kind of a link to the website where I share some of my tools. They are for sale there. The other one is the commitment of traders report or the COT meter, as I like to call it, which gives us a little bit of insight on what institutional money is doing. And this is a tool that we also have been building behind the scenes. Uh, myself, as well as the programming team, have been working quite a bit to work on this tool, and it's something that that I heavily will be using in my own trading. So next up, let's talk about the currency pairs that I actually trade. You can see there's a good number. What is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven times two. That's 14 pairs that I'm actively watching, right? And so you can see most of them are gonna be, you're gonna have those, of course, the majors, Euro dollar, USD yen, um, GBP USD and USD Swiss, if you wanna consider it that. Um, you can see that it's also got a good number of things. Uh, I avoid, for the most part, a lot of the yen pairs just generally because um, they can be very, very volatile and the yen is kind of a safe haven for wealth, if you will, and sometimes can really, really trend, similar to how gold can sometimes behave. Next up, let's talk about the market conditions that I'm actually looking for in my particular trading style. So I've written out here, I'll be looking for possible reversible setups and oversold and overbought levels or zones, right? This is kind of something I look for in my own trading. I look for potential zones of support and resistance that may call for some sort of reversal. Next up, let's talk about a combination of price action, fundamentals, and market data. This stuff over here, the currency strength meter as well as the COT report, um, will be my primary tools for finding trading setups, okay? And also, I will trade primarily in the direction of positive swaps or interest payments. Part of my strategy involves collecting positive swaps and building kind of the account through interest over time. Even if this brings in just one to 3% per year, that's still something worth um, kind of doing for me in my own trading because it also kind of limits the expenses that I get you know, deducted from my account due to trading in the other direction. So let's talk about risk management. This is the next one you can see, take a look at this. It takes up an entire part of my trading plan. An entire page out of my journal is dedicated to risk management and this is entirely necessary. I highly advise if you're looking into trading, if you're looking into building a plan yourself, 
definitely take the time to really write out your risk management. Because risk management to me is kind of the bread and butter, the thing that's gonna make or break you as a trader. Um, at least in my own experience, at least in my own trading, the only time I've ever you know blown accounts or really you know been frustrated with my trading is because I was not even paying attention to risk management. Now, the other one is trading psychology, which we'll get to in a second. But for the most part, let's talk about risk management. Limited exposure to individual currencies. What you'll notice here is that I limit only three open trades max on any particular currency. This is part of my risk management plan. A lot of people think that the only way to manage risk is just to put a tight stop loss on your trade. And I would disagree with that because I think that there are other ways, um, not just on the retail side, but institutional ways, right? They'll hedge their bets. They'll kind of limit their exposure to particular things, right? There's not just a tight stop loss. That's not the only way to manage risk. Notice there's an entire page here full of other things to talk about limited exposure to individual currencies. So for example, if I'm trading AUD, USD, New Zealand dollar, and USD yen, right? If I have three USD trades, right? It's a USD, USD, USD. I cannot take any more US dollar trades. This is a part of my plan for a reason. I don't wanna be overexposed to the movements of the US dollar. Why? Because this puts the account at risk. Anytime you take a position in the market, you are risking your capital, right? So we don't wanna risk too much on any particular one move. It's not about how much money you can make in trading, it's about managing your risk and sticking to the plan. Hence why we have a plan. So next up, let's talk about small position sizing. If you've been watching my channel for, for a while, um, then what you'll notice is that I never stop talking about small positions. Small positions are huge to me. Small positions are huge to me. That should be my saying here on the channel. Small positions are important to me because they reduce the exposure overall the account is faced on any market movements. Now, you can also say, well, that means I'm gonna make less money. But to me, that's a necessary thing. It's a necessary thing to accept less potential reward, to accept less potential risk. There's always risk in trading, and the smaller our positions are, the less kind of um, exposed we are to those particular moves. To reduce risks, positions will always be kept small. With no stop loss, a $500 for every 1,000 units bought or sold, this is 0.01 lots. That's kind of my rule if I'm using no stop loss in my trading strategies. Remember, I said there's other ways to manage risk other than just a stop loss. And if I'm using a stop loss, 1% risk per trade. This means that whatever this position size should be relative to 1% of the account relative to my take profit and stop loss, right? So my stop loss distance should be accounting for just 1% of the account if it hits negative, okay? Max drawdown, this is a big one, guys. And not a lot of people think about this. If the account goes through an unusual losing streak or large losses accumulate, all trades will be closed at negative 40%. This is really, really important to define because a lot of times traders are just thrown off guard when things don't work out, right? And they just, you know, they, they freak out and they're like, well, what's happened here? I've lost a bunch of money and when do I cut this, um, cut the trades and when do I get out and when do I, you know, all that stuff, right? Well, for me, negative 40% is the time to get out of the trades and to reevaluate the strategy. At this point, the account will be closed and strategy will be reevaluated. Fortunately, in my own trading style, using small positions and using a kind of multiple reasons of uh, or multiple factors of risk management, I've never seen a significant drawdown. It's definitely possible that it could come, um, but I want to keep my position size small so that the overall drawdown on the accounts never exceeds 40%. Okay, so let's flip the page here and we'll take a look at what everybody wants to talk about. This is the thing that people just um, love in trading and I'm not shaming that, I like entries and exits as well, but let's talk about entries and exits. Um, my strategy personally is not something that I can just put into a box. It's not something that I can just say, step one, two, three, and you make money. That's not how my trading strategy works. For me, I identify kind of technical analysis to get me in, involved, in, in and out of the markets in combination with those other factors that we mentioned earlier, those indicators and the COT report data, that sort of thing, to build a trading thesis and to tell a story with my trades rather than just a you know a purely technical purely you know entry here stop loss here take profit here my trading strategy is a little bit more detailed than that so i'm going to look for identified zones of potential supply and demand i'm going to be looking for positive swaps and fundamental bias right in the last year the us dollar has been very very strong and and for the most part we've been on the long side of the us dollar collecting really really good trades off of that in the vip team um, now, if you've been following along in the VIP service that I do offer, then you'll notice that a lot of times I am trading long only on USD for the time being. That may change with fundamental bias, but for now, that's what I've been sticking to and it's been working out great. Until that changes, until that shifts and the fundamentals change a little bit, that's what I'll be doing. 
Next up, let's talk about technical analysis. Again, this is what everybody wants to see. They want to see the technical entry. Show me exactly where to buy, show me exactly where to sell. And I can't give you an easy answer there because there is none in my opinion. The markets are changing every single day. And so for me, technical analysis involves using Fibonacci's, it involves patterns, and again, supply and demand, and as well as potential candlestick patterns and you know reversal patterns and that sort of thing, right? So just an example of a strategy that I'd like to look, remember, I look for oversold and overbought kind of zones. A lot of people say those don't exist, but to me, they've worked well in the past um, and hopefully in the future, right? So here is kind of just an example, just a very simple, basic idea of what I might be looking for overall. Let's say a market is trending to the upside and we get some sort of a pullback and it comes into confluence with um, you know, a major structural support level, right? Here's another one. A level of resistance became a potential level of support here. And that's where I'd look to get long. It's very simple, just looking to scale into a position. Now, the second, and this is the kind of added component of that, you can see that the secondary small entries may occur if another technical opportunity is found. So for me, in my strategy, it's a little bit more adaptive than purely predictive, right? So what that means is that I'm looking to get involved with a strategy or get involved with a trade, get involved with a buy position in this case. And if there's another opportunity to enter again, then I might, right? So I might add a second position if I like the trade. Now I know that's not for everybody and some people will give me crap for that and they'll say, you know, you should never do that. But to me, this is what's worked. This is what I back tested extensively and I don't like to listen to other people, to be honest. So let's go ahead and talk about the exit. Technical zones and price action will be used to place take profit levels, okay? So what I'm gonna use on the exit is technical zones and price action for the most part. I'm gonna be looking to get out of a trade at a technical zone of supply or demand that I see, that I you know kind of come to find in my technical analysis, and primarily going to be using support and resistance in this factor. You can see, for example, if I was short here, I'd look to take profit at a recent structure. Very simple, very kind of basic. Trading doesn't have to be super complicated. Again, it's the other stuff that we've been talking about that's more important in my opinion, but everybody wants to talk about entries and exits. I would highly advise in your trading, uh, when you're building a trading plan, take more time on the other things than your entries and exits. See what happens. Let's talk about the objectives of the overall account. If I can get this page to turn. So the objectives of my personal account, the number one goal of my trading is to protect capital first and look to make profits second. I wanna say that again, because a lot of people don't kind of understand that. And the reason I'm picking on this is because when I first started trading, I was totally the other way around. I was totally going for, let's make some money first, and then we'll worry about risking later. But now, after years of trading and after kind of building consistency in my own trading, um, protecting capital, number one, absolutely the first thing is to protect your capital that you deposit. Not to grow it, not to double it really quickly, to protect it. We need to protect the account, the account first so that we can continue to trade and then we continue to play the game. You can't win if you can't trade, right? If you have no money left, you can't make any place uh, or can't make any bets, right? So making profits is gonna be a second. Through backtesting my strategy extensively, I've found that my target annual goal that I am comfortable with and accept the associated risk is going to be on average a monthly return of one to 3% and an annual return of 12 to 30%. Whoa, 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 Nick. Did you just say you're only gonna shoot for 12 to 36% per year? That seems ridiculous, right? Well, maybe for you, but for me, I'm working with a larger amount of capital. And again, my goal is to keep that risk very, very low because this is capital that I can afford to lose, but I really prefer not to, right? So I'm really gonna keep this trade account as low risk as possible. Now for you, it might be different. I'm not gonna say that you can't make more than 12 to 36% per year. Again, kind of a rough number is 20%. I'm not gonna say that. What I am gonna say is that for me, this is a number that I'm comfortable with. I'm comfortable with the risk that I've seen in my back testing. I'm uncomfortable with the drawdown that I've seen trading this back, you know, 10, 15, 20 years. Uh, that's the amount of back testing that I've done on this particular trading strategy, mostly using that daily and that four hour time frame. I accept that putting any, and this is important for everybody who's making a trading plan, I highly advise that you write something down like this. I accept that by putting any amount of money in the markets, I can lose all or even more than my initial investment. If you don't accept this, if you don't understand this, you're gonna trade way too heavy on the emotional side. Nobody wants to lose their account. I'm not saying that that's necessarily what's gonna happen to you and definitely not what I want to happen to me either. But I'm saying that as traders, it's important that we accept the risk and that we put that behind us and trade forward without fear. If you're trading with fear, if you're trading with greed, it's not gonna go well. I've been there, I've done that, never works out well. Trading with control emotions is huge. Trading psychology is the next topic, go figure. 
I'm gonna journal all my trades and emotions associated with each. I do this and I, I journal and write down all of my trades um, and I share kind of my thoughts with how each trade went. If the trades currently open cause a lack of sleep or strained relationships, I need to reevaluate. When I was newer to trading, I couldn't sleep holding positions at open at night. And what I realized is that my positions were too big. If your positions are keeping you up at night, something is wrong. Something is you're out of risk. Your risk management is not in check or you're not emotionally kind of comfortable with what you're doing and you really need to reevaluate what's going on. So for me, that's an important thing. These two indicators, if I have strained relationships or I have you know trouble sleeping, that's gonna be a problem for me and that's gonna be something that is gonna take my focus off of my trading. Next up, I'm gonna take walks and I'm gonna regularly exercise. These two things are extremely important and something that I never would have thought about when I first started trading as important, but found later on that these are huge. Taking walks and clearing your head and getting away from the charts when things are going good or bad is really important. And trading and, and trading um, combined with exercising or working out is really good as well because it gives you a fresh, open, um, kind of open mind about what's going on because working out is just really, really good for you. It's really good for your mind. It's really good for your body. It's really good all around. And you know, truly I've traded my best when I've been working out regularly. That sounds weird and it sounds like they wouldn't be correlated, but for me personally, it absolutely is. And again, this is my trading plan, not yours. You should write your own. You should write your own details, what makes you the most comfortable in your trading and how you can keep that psychology in check. Let's talk about the trades too. I talk about my trades regularly to members. That's why I actually started the VIP service that I have. And that's where I share my trades and I talk about my trades to my members. Um, that's a huge thing and it's very, very important. And I highly, uh, kind of highly recommend that if you're not already part of a good trading community, consider joining one. It doesn't necessarily have to be mine, but if you would like to join mine, there's a link down below. You can join the community and join and follow along with what I'm doing in the markets. Again, I share my trades and I talk about what's going on. And finally, continue to learn. You should never stop learning. The best traders and the best investors are never already there or they're never you know, a genius or a guru. If you see anybody claiming they're a guru or they're claiming they're you know, an amazing trader, that's a sign of weakness. That's a sign of not actually being genuine. For me, I'm learning every single day. I'm building consistency and learning discipline and building that over time. Now, I have built consistency in my trading, but there's never enough to learn that you need to stop, right? You always can continue to learn. Guys, thanks so much for joining me. I loved sharing my trading plan with you guys today. I hope you got something out of it, and I do hope that you'll take the time to build your own trading plan. Let me know how it goes in the comments down below, and we'll catch you next time.